progress bars. They are the essential part of the user interface, which helps the user understand how much time a certain process like download, transfer or installation will take. However, programmers also need progress bars, especially when running a program that takes a long time to complete. What if there is a bug and the program is running infinitely? You wouldn't know. That's why progress bars matter. But they are so hard to create. Luckily, most programming languages already have third-party libraries that can generate all sorts of progress bars. And Python is no exception. Let's take a look at the best of these Python libraries. TQDM library is an ultimate Python developer progress bar tool. It's super simple to use, but contains a lot of functionality if you want to get deeper. It has Pandas, TensorFlow and Jupyter Notebook support. It can also be connected to Discord and Telegram bots if you want to be messaged about your progress bar state. How crazy is that? It's also very fast, in terms of Python fast. So you don't need to worry about optimization. Let's look at some examples of TQDM usage. Hey, before we continue with examples, I want to play a little game with you. Press that like and subscribe button right now, and if you don't find this video useful by the end of it, you can always unsubscribe, remove the like, and even take one back. Enjoy the examples. Alright, we have got three examples right here. The main principle here is that you put any iterable into a TQDM object, and it returns to you that the same iterable, but with a progress bar. Here it's a simple program, we append uh, each number of the range 10 to a list with a time sleep point 3 so we can see the progress bar moving. Let's run it. See? The progress bar is automatically generated and uh, after that a list is printed. So basically you wrap it into a TQDM and it generates you a progress bar automatically. The second example shows you a bit more functionality of it. You can assign a TQDM object to a variable and then iterate through that variable and also you can give a description to your progress bar. Let's run this and see what happens. All of the same happens, but progress bar is a variable this time and you got a description to your progress bar. And in the third example, as you can see, we just, we don't use range. We just used a TQDM object with a total number of iterations and we manually iterate through it by updating it by the number of iterations we want. Keep in mind that you must add up the total number of iterations to the total here because as you can see we run the program everything runs okay but if you for example put here not 5 but 2 because 2, 2 times 20 is 40 and 5 times 20 is 100. So if we put this, as you can see, it only worked for about 40% because 2 times 20 is 40. So if you use this method, you get more control, more manual control, but you have to keep all of the iterations in mind. And don't forget to close your progress bar after you do it. This is basically all you need to know to control the program flow with TQDM. But if you want to get into more advanced stuff, I will link their GitHub down below, where there's a great readme with every functionality explained. However, if you want a nicer looking progress bar, you can go for a live bar module, which has a ton of coolest looking progress bars out there. This is my personal favorite, and let's take a look at some of its code examples. Alright, so the first example shows us how we simply use a live bar. As you can see, we have to import from a live process import a live bar. And uh, you install a live bar with pip install a live a live progress. Like that. And the previous one I forgot to mention, it's just TQDM. I think that's quite straightforward. And as you can see here, the whole thing is a bit different from TQDM because you use something uh, as with close and you state that with a live bar as bar or as any other variable you want 
you give it for i in range 100 it's important that here 100 and here 100 as well because if uh, ranges won't be the same there will be a half progress bar problem as it was in the previous one and you call bar after every iteration of your progress bar so your progress bar iterates over let's launch it and see here the progress bar itself is much more beautiful it has more information it has iterations per second etc however what's cool about this this like this whole library is that you don't have to use you don't have to state the amount of iterations you'll be doing because if you don't know how much iterations your, your process is going to take you can just put a live bar with nothing in it and uh, it'll give you a simple spinner and the info and all of the information will be the same but you but you at least still will get some information in return from it so in this way it's superior to tqdm now let's talk about what this library is famous for customization here it's the same progress bar from example one and here is basically the same progress bar as from the example one but much more customized we give it a bar type as bubbles and spinner as arrows and again everything is basically the same so let's compare these, these two progress bars goes really well a simple progress bar and then this boom and it looks like it, it just looks much better and much cooler i don't know and you can also like get a lot of different progress bars as you can see there's a showtime code i wrote here you can import from a live process you can import we won't show spinners we'll just show the, all of the progress bars you can have and uh, if i launch it See, see how many different progress bars you can get. It, it, it's super cool. And also what's cool about this module as well is that you don't have to use an iterable to get a progress bar. Because as you can see here, every iteration of the progress bar is passed when this bar thing is called. So theoretically, we can write three different functions which represent three different processes. You can put anything in here. Here I just put for for iron range, sleep for 0.2 seconds, etc. And here I wrote the same with clause with my favorite bar and spinner. And uh, as you can see, after each function call, you can call the bar thing and you will get it as a progress bar. So the bar has three iterations because we have three functions and it'll show all of the process to you. Let's see. One, two, and three. And also, I forgot to mention, when you print during your progress bar generation, you will get the iteration it was printed on, and uh, the progress bar will not be left behind, it will always stay at the bottom. So that's quite interesting. And this is all the functionality you may need to use this library. If you want to know more of what this library has to offer, I will leave the link below to their github with great documentation, make sure to check it out. But if you still aren't satisfied with these libraries, there are two more libraries named Progress and Progress2 respectively. These libraries let you create custom progress bars for your liking. They are easy to use, so I will link both githubs down below and I don't provide any code snippets here, so the video will not be too long. Thanks for watching! Like, comment, follow me on GitHub and subscribe for more coding.